Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. I did a little stuff off screen and I actually killed this guy. Uh, among a couple of others. If we like, we can actually look at Sauron's army. I've replaced this dude like three or four times. I've killed I've killed this slot of Warchief a couple of times. Uh, so I guess I am going to have to take out more of these guys before I get to that. But until then... Let's go to disc two then, huh? A company of Lothariel deep behind enemy lines into the heart of Mordor. But I thought we were in the heart of Mordor, right? So, back in the day, uh, video games were put on things called CDs. Normally they were only good for holding music. Before no DVDs and Blu-rays, a CD was the only thing that you could put a, d a game on. And they tend to travel in packs. Should leave now. Queen will be pleased to see you. Um, so something like Final Fantasy VII, a, ver a notoriously long game. I mean, it's a JRPG. Most of them are really, really long. Uh, but FF7 was on three CDs, I think. We are here. Now you don't even get discs with a game. Because everything's download anyway. And I hate that because I like I like having a CD or a DVD or whatever. Um, and I think the last time I can remember a game with multiple discs was Rage on the 360. But this feels like the most like disc two I've I've felt in a while, you know. And like, this was a download, and I played this game on PS4 where it's only had one disc. But, if you saw, we just went to the other half of Mordor. A fallen ranger from the Black Gate. Come closer. That's what happens to you if you only drink soda and don't drink water. Caitlyn. Not for you, Oh yeah, Caitlyn's now appearing in some of my LPs. Check that out, isn't that neat? That's my little thing I like to do. Mostly because they live there. A great power can be awakened to prevent it. Is that why I'm here? Breach into Morgoth's scar. The elven craftwork from the ghouls and find Ma'am, are you gray and blue? Cause I don't look right, I'll be honest. Stay strong, mother. Get her into bed, dude. She's dying in this chair. We're like this close to having a man down right there, dude. Oh, it's called being 80. No one knows. She worsened after her travels. Is there not medicine? There was. But our camp was overrun. That's not my joke. That's stolen from a Mike Nelson bit on, um... <sighs> it's a riff tracks of some... It's a riff tracks of the movie Hawk the Slayer, which is a classic... Uh, 80s era pseudo fantasy movie that tries to be Lord of the Rings because they couldn't get the rights for that. The villain is played by Jack Palance, I want to say. Is that that guy's name? Anyway, the point is, is that he's really old. So yeah, we just have a whole new map now, and it's totally different. This is all the ocean. Good chance we can and pick up the ghouls look, there's grass. Caravan we passed earlier by the ravine. And not even like mush, like the the the, the scrub and and roughage in Mord in um, I guess that's North Mordor. Or no, th maybe this is North Mordor. Orcs are still the same. But yeah, there's a whole second map, and like, that's the biggest, like, 
Oh my god, I'm on disc two. I felt in a really long time. A citadel from the ancient world. Secrets seen only by my eyes. Oh, man. How does the queen know of your past? Ancient knowledge lays unseen by all but spirits. She can see into both worlds. Then perhaps she will lead us to what we seek. Anyway, Mike Nelson, he makes a joke that Jack Palance is talking to like his ancient mystical like protector uh, deity guy. And the deity guy is like, an affliction haunts your flesh. You do not heal. An affliction, you know? Nature thrives in none. I never thought I'd and Mike Nelson is like, mortal. this is how the Dark Lord shall feed his army. Yeah, there you go. And Mike Nelson's like, an affliction called being 80. It fucking cracks me up every time. It's one of the funniest <laughs> things Mike Nelson has ever said. So yeah, Finally, I'm free. in the real world, a volcano is actually a really awesome thing for the lands around it because the volcanic ash and the volcanic like soil can end up feeding plants Her real good. Able to see your true form. She wants the maker of the rings of power to awaken. Pa. On his knees with his heart cut out. No you know, like I talked about how with Mordor you get the the rolled R, you know, no one no one in universe actually says Mordor. They always say Mordor. And they roll it really hard every time. But then on the flip side with uh human words with with Westron, you don't get any R's at R. Uh, any R's at all. Like, power is just pa, you know? P A A H. Goals are scavengers. They take all, but leave one thing behind. I must locate the ghoul's tracks. Zork's missing his shoes. Must have been killed for his Nikes. There's our trail. Uh, so yeah, like, straight up, volcanic earth and, like, ash is obviously bad if it's in the air and all, but, uh, like, volcanoes feed earth really well. You've seen The Incredibles, you know. I assume you've seen The Incredibles. It was a very popular movie. Um, How will we lead scouts to the ambush? but yeah, like, and you know what? Mordor is also a place where a lot of people live. A big army lives. So, like, hey, orcs gotta eat, you know? Granted, I don't know if orcs can actually eat farmed foods. Well, agriculturally farmed foods. Obviously, they can eat meat. They love meat. Um, actually, I guess that they can eat grains. Because in the movie, uh, they're like, We ain't had nothing to eat but maggoty bed for three stinking days, you know? So they do eat that maggoty bread at the very least. They don't like it, but that might just be due to the quality of the food. I always really love the line read. I don't know if I'm doing it justice, but when he's like, three stinking days, I think it's a really good line. And I think it's read very well. The actor does a good job. And then to oppose the big growly voice of the other orc, the other one's like, what about their legs? They don't need those. You know? And he's really skinny and creepy. It's a really good highlight. Like, I, I mean, I've already talked about that scene in this, in this Let's Play, in this series. But like, you know what? It's an awesome scene. It's a really, really good scene. It gets across so much. Nope, get back here. See ya. <laughs> yeah, hoo -hoo -hoo so anyway, yeah, uh, orcs must be able to eat like wheat because they eat bread. Which I guess means that orcs might be like monoculturing, which can actually be pretty bad for the land. That's what happened to the Irish. I mean, it's part of why the Irish got so fucked up. It's because they were only growing potatoes. 
There was other food, it's just that they couldn't afford to buy the food at the prices Britain was asking for. On account of Britain being a country of, like, slave owners and savages and criminals, you know? Like, people talk about Australia being a, a, a continent uh, people entirely by criminals, but, like, maybe it's just because not being a dick was illegal in Britain. You ever think about that? I can think of one nice British person off the top of my head, and he died last year. Those flames might prove useful if we are overwhelmed. Tolkien was relatively nice, and he ended up dead. Thanks to that big British conspiracy about killing anyone who's nice. They have, a, they have an image to maintain, you know? But anyway, yeah. Your heirloom must be here. I really like, because, like, obviously Mordor is one of the most iconic things ever, and, like, the concept of having a big black land and a volcano and a red sky and gray smoke everywhere is scary and, and ominous and well-known. But Mordor in the movies doesn't actually look that bad, you know? Oh, yeah, also, this is the hammer that got forged and was used to forge the rings. Also, yeah, like, if you got psychometry, I imagine a murder weapon would be a pretty bad thing to touch. Psychometry, it's just this, the superpower of being able to remember things by touch. And yeah, the ring was forged in the fire of Mount Doom. I don't know what happened to that anvil, though, but that's the crack of doom. Hey, you know who that is. Shake it off, Italian. Duty calls and all that. What is that creature? It's a ghoul matron. Sorry, I was looking at my health and not at the dodge prompt. Pardon me, everyone. How's that do ya? Cool matrons have notoriously been a problem for me in a this playthrough, although I don't remember if I had it on screen. Pardon me, fellas. Wait, what happened there? The storm is passed. All right, let's party. But yeah, like, obviously, like, just the concept of seeing Morrowind and it's... And it's this big, ultra-scary, like... Like a, like a big, like, black Uberwald, you know? There we go. Like, you know, everyone likes seeing that, and that's cool and all, but, like, obviously the whole thing can't be like that. It has to be kind of nice, at least, you know? Can I drain one of you? What I really need is more arrows, guys. Can anybody help me with that?
<laughs> Yowza. Oh, how about you? Can you give me some arrows? Damn. I was hoping to get a combat train off, but you know what? It's probably not even worth it. It's so... Like, look, it's a cliche to have an action movie. The idea of doing it in a fantasy realm of having a cool guy not look at an explosion is like... At this point, not looking at an explosion is so cliched that talking about how it's a cliche is a cliche. Pity to end your military career inside the belly of a ghoul, eh? Hey, every dwarf must have a Scottish accent. It's a rule. I'm Torvin, a beast hunter. And I bet ten pints you just nabbed the treasure I was after. Now, I am grateful for the assistance, but it does not grant you proprietary rights. <laughs> Keep it! I just found something a lot more valuable. <laughs> and what would that be? My new hunting partner! Uh, what you hunt does not interest me, Master Dwarf. Even if it leads you to the chisel that belongs to that hammer. Every creature's got its lure. Yours just happens to be. I love the tattoos. Very old. This is obviously a very like post Hobbit dwarf. If the thrill of the hunt takes your fancy, the camp's not far. I'll let these fools finish their little back and forth. I mean, such as it is, Kelebrimbor is notoriously stone-faced. What of your vision, Kelebrimbor? I used all that he had taught me and forged the three in secret. Water, air, and fire. Where do I go from here? I guess I can just warp, yeah? So anyway, yeah, um, like... This is a very, very consistent and long-standing thing in fantasy fiction, but all dwarves are exactly the same. Like, sometimes you'll see, like, elves, and they play them like, oh, all the elves are cannibals. I've actually gotten more than one of those now. Or they'll be like, elves are, elves do mean well, but, like, you still can't argue with them, or, like, Sorry, let me start over. There are usually a bunch of cliches that fantasy RPGs and fantasy writing usually goes for. Orcs are almost always mindless, big, meaty warriors who love violence and killing and all that stuff. Elves are usually stuck up, smarmy, but no better than people. Um, sometimes they can be argued with, sometimes they cannot. Hey, that's halfway, yeah. I guess that's why I got an achievement, huh? Ooh, I'm getting close to another ability. What about in here? Nah, but that's okay. Sometimes you can argue with elves, sometimes it's a waste of time. Raised in defiance of the Dark Lord. Um, but sometimes you'll get mix-ups for that. Like, elves will all be, like, crazy racists, or elves will be super warriors, or elves will be, like, all cannibals, or sometimes, like, orcs will be, like, eruditic and druidic and wise and stuff. I fear Lethariel will never surrender. Her honor will doom them all. Wow, that's a ballroom blitz over there. I don't even, I'm not even gonna get in on that. Pardon me, fellas.
Bolg Drooler. Now, is that a name or what? I'm going to grab this while I'm talking. Um, but yeah, like, you have typical orcs or you have, like, post-reconstructionist orcs where, like, they don't have a violence culture. They have, like, an honor culture. They're all, like, samurai or, you know, or, like, Viking warriors or that sort of thing. Um, like, the orcs in the Elder Scrolls, the orcs in um, World of Warcraft are, you know, very much like that. Uh, as opposed to, like, orc classic. You know, orcs like you would have in Middle Earth, orcs like you would have in, like, Warhammer. Um... And then Eberron, because it's Eberron, mixes it up. Elves and orcs are switched. Orcs are uh, peaceful, druidic, wisdom-based, live within harmony and nature, are all kind and smart and shit. And uh, elves are all crazy warlords. And, like, it makes sense. Somebody who's immortal would probably have a lot of interests in war and claiming land and revanchism and that sort of thing. These towers reach from here. I live on in these stones. Um, but one thing that you will almost always get. Wow, you got a posse, huh? You did what now? But one thing about dwarves is that dwarves never get a mix up. Like, to my knowledge, dwarves in Eberron are still like regular dwarves. Dwarves in the Elder Scrolls, even though they're a subspecies of elf as opposed to a totally different race, are a different species, you know, from regular elves. But they have beards and they mine and they. You have to help. My brother was speaking ill of the Dark Lord. He made the slave a furious. Why would you, you know? I guess he might have just assumed that someone couldn't hear him, but like. I don't know. I wouldn't take that chance. Personally. What's the thing? I see a little thing on the map here. But yeah, like, the Elder Scrolls and, uh, uh, Aberon, things that are notorious for mixing it up. Or Warcraft, things that are notorious for, like, giving a, a new twist on old, on old classics. Dwarves are still totally identical to dwarves. Every time, you know? You can pause and read this if you want. And let's see what we're getting here. Death threat. Issue a death threat to a captain through interrogation. Fire arrow. When your hit streak is charged, unleash a fire arrow. Wraith blast. Brand. Oh, uh, we'll look at that later. Blade master. That one's really good. Absorb one hit without the hit streak being reset. Yeah, take a hit without dropping your combo is really powerful. Because, like, normally it's just, like, one little screw-up where you go a little harder than you're supposed to, you know? I got, I got 770. But, yeah, like, it is, it is notorious. Dwarves are always exactly the same. Uruk do not care for trinkets. Sauron will use gold to buy allies among the kingdoms of men. I would love to have gotten a show about that, Amazon. I not to at you guys, but... Food and grog. Instead, we get nothing but a lot of noise from the boss. You'll get a lot more nothing <laughs> if you keep whining about it. So, like, every dwarf is Gimli, and you know what? Most people don't have a problem with that, because Gimli's awesome. He's a fun character, he's nice to talk and listen to, and he entertains me personally a lot. A great deal, in fact. 
Go ahead and pause this if you like. Getting close to greatness and power. Stormwind does not seem to know his limitations. He is not one to wait for his fate to come to him. He rushes to meet it. Hell yeah. Total Akam. Or Akarn, possibly. Oh, I have another ability point. Well, why don't we just get that? Why don't we? And then let's grab you. Beautiful. We're halfway done on the main missions. Got a lot of those. Hell yeah. Hell yes. Just nothing but hell yeses for me, guys. Um. So anyway, like, Lord of the Rings invented the, the way that modern dwarves are. The way that they behave and look. And revels in that. Because that that's great. And then there was a little problem, you know? Everyone loves dwarf classic. And every dwarf ever in like almost anything is just Gimli. The dwarf in the D&D movie is called... I can't tell you his name actually, but he's just Gimli. The like... The guy in... Uh, the point... Uh, the guy in... Um, Drist's book. What's his name? Bruno or Battlehammer. Also basically just Gimli. There's a lot of, you know, D&D fiction where, like, you'll just find another, like, there'll be one dwarf in the party, and that dwarf will always act like Gimli, because Gimli's awesome. And so I don't really complain about it. Like, I talk about it, but, like, I don't mind that one bit. I love Gimli, and I'm happy that every dwarf is just Gimli. What beautiful stones, this tower reborn, as am I. That's an ominous thing to say, Celebrimbor. So then there came a problem, you know, as there often does. They were making a movie of The Hobbit. That's a fancy whetstone. Go ahead and pause this if you like. I've heard all of these before and don't have that much interest in them. Dwarf knows no fear. I don't know if he's brave or stupid. Or both. He has no fear of death. But there are many worse things than death waiting in Mordor. Pardon me, fellas. Please, not on my terms. I don't like the sound of that. But anyway, uh, Peter Jackson was making a Hobbit movie. I don't even know if Peter Jackson wanted to make a movie of The Hobbit, but they're making one. And that book has 15 main characters. One of them is Gandalf. Well, we know him. We know Gandalf. It's fucking Gandalf. And you know what? We do know Gandalf. Easy. Open and shut. Just get the same guy, you know? He was great last time. He'll be great this time. It's Gandalf. It works. And then we got Bilbo. Well, we saw a little of him, too. And you know what? He's a hobbit. He's more typical of a hobbit than Frodo is, but, like... Hey, he acts pretty much like a, like a typical Hobbit stuff. Hobbit classic with a little spice of adventure. Kind of like Sam, almost. That's fine by me. What are the other characters? Oh, the other characters in The Hobbit are 13 dwarves. And obviously, if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings watching this LP on your own terms, you know that. But like, I remember being a kid and being in on Lord of the Rings and like, well not, actually no, not being in on Lord of the Rings. Getting into Lord of the Rings for the first time after like hearing that it was like this super amazing like mega story and like it defined fiction forever and it changed the world and it, it did do all of those things. You hear that? So because now I'm doing this on five, I only need to hit five in order to kill. This is a big fight. Oh man. You know what? I changed my mind. 
This is not the move. <laughs> Just like passing by all these other orcs and I'm like, Ooh, do not go back there, guys. It is not good. I see nothing but troubles. But anyway, yeah, like I remember getting to uh, the Hobbit as a, as a kid and being like, oh, this book is about 13 fucking dwarves. Like not even seven dwarves. It's about 13 of them. And like almost all of them are brothers or triplets. So like you have like Biffer and Bomber and you have like Dwaylin, Dwaylin and Balin, I think their names are. And you have, like, Philly and Keely, and so, like, really, you have to remember half the names, as long as you can put an and in there. Takes Eldar shape. Um, yeah, you have to remember half the names, as long as you can keep the and in there, and you just, like, remember that they're basically a duogamous unit. Or, like, they're brothers or whatever. Uh, and the only really important one is Thorin. The problem is when, like, that's just a silly, fun story that you're telling your child, as J.R.R. Tolkien did to Christopher Tolkien, which is the origin of The Hobbit. For those who didn't know, it was a bedtime story. Um, or even for, like, uh, a chapter book, you know, you don't really need to get in there, but, like, they had a problem with that in the movie, because, like, if this movie is about, you know, Frodo's, Frodo's uncle and ten... I mean, I say 10 as a way to exaggerate, but that's really lowballing it. But, like, if this movie's about Frodo's uncle, Gandalf, and uh, 13 Gimli's, then it's going to be very boring and hard to keep things different and separate. So, instead, they started to vary up the dwarf designs. And, like, they kind of got to, because otherwise the movie would kind of be a mess in terms of, like, costume and design and things. Sir, have I got a proposition for you. You're going to tell me everything I want to know, and I will kill you painlessly. So, yeah, we have a whole new army here. Let's find out a big guy, huh? Tumig Life Drinker. Caragors and combat finishers. Invulnerable to stealth and ranged. Oh, man. That ain't good. So they started to divvy up the designs of the dwarves. So, like, Philly and Killy are, like, fairly twinkish. They've got a little bit of beards. Thorin looks like a bearded elf. Um, Dwaylin, I think, the big bald dude, like, looks pretty much like dwarf classic. But, like, to make sure that he doesn't look too generic, I think there's, like, a pickaxe stuck out of his head. Like, there's a chunk of pickaxe, like, that's just stuck in his head, like, big boss. And it's, it's too close and it's too dangerous to try and operate on it. So, like, you may as well just leave it there. It's not hurting you. Um, and, like, those are all really cool designs. And, like, I feel like that's the origin of Torvin's design. Like, we, like, oh, the, the gates have been open on uh, dwarf designs. You know, we can we can do anything as long as it's short and muscular. Uh, so I wanted to mention this. So these are the two DLC campaigns. This one is just like this one is score attack, you know? You can see. This one is, you know, just cool custom alt co alt, alt costumes. We can just play as him. We can just play as her. We can uh, play as him as he was alive, and then we can play as, like, evil Talion. But this is the first DLC campaign. It's teaming up with Torvin, so we're going to end up seeing more of him. And that's why I wanted to explain what I feel about his character. I feel like it's a very interesting, like, post-Hobbit design. 
uh, you know, of like, oh, we can just do a lot of cool stuff with dwarves as long as we stick to like pretty beardy, relatively beardy, very muscular, very short, and that's it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of great about Torvin's design. And then this one, this one you can see takes place in like North Mordor. I think it's well, Nern, it says. Nerm? Num? Nerm. Sorry, I can't teleport the R's, N's, and M's. They gotta be capitals. And then this one takes place in South Mordor, and it takes place as you play as Celebrimbor. And like, I feel like I shouldn't spoil these, but considering the fact that you click on, oh, I want to play, and then it just starts you here, and it's like, hey, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna play as fucking Celebrimbor? Do you wanna play around with Torvin? Um, but yeah, that's basically it. And that's another episode of Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Uh, I didn't have any controller problems this time, so hopefully I can repeat that process because it was very nice to just start up and play. But I had a very, very good time. Uh, I'll see you guys all next time. I've been Alfred. This has been Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Thank you all for coming. I hope you had a good time because I dang old did.